Hi, my name is Chami Nguyen, and for the past five weeks, I worked with my mentor, Anthony Asuna, in the Keigo Autism Center in order to understand the stigma associated with autism in older Filipino communities. I would first like to start with a brief introduction of autism spectrum disorder. Like the previous presenters mentioned, autism spectrum disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder that results in impaired social and communicative skills. ASD affects 1 in 59 children in the United States, and it is four times more prevalent in males than females. Additionally, there are currently more than 3.5 million people in the United States with an ASD diagnosis. Although this is only 1% of the population, this is still a very large number, especially considering that there are many people on the spectrum who are yet to be diagnosed. A large issue pertaining to ASD, however, is the underrepresentation of ethnic minorities. There currently is a large disparity between ethnic minority families and non-ethnic white families regarding the rates of ASD diagnosis and treatment. This gap in time and lack of treatment is especially crucial for children within these ethnic minority communities as it directly impairs their social, emotional, and behavioral development. This gap is also reflected within ASD research participation, where samples tend to be primarily white or researchers fail to provide enough contextual details about the participants, both of which impair the, the generalizability of these studies' results. A potential cause to both of these issues may be a phenomenon that is more prevalent within ethnic minority communities, which is stigma. Stigma, as Google defines it, is a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. This definition, however, does not encompass the entirety of the meaning of the word stigma, which can be further divided into two categories, public and perceived. Public stigma is when a community collectively endorses discriminatory behavior, prejudice, and stereotypes against a certain characteristic. Perceived stigma, on the other hand, is a, it's when an individual with that certain characteristic or that individual's family internalizes the public stigma that they, that they either experience or perceive from their community. As a result, they develop feelings of shame and discomfort about that characteristic. My study analyzed both types of stigma while looking at older Filipino communities. We chose to focus on these demographics since stigma is more prevalent within ethnic minority communities as well as within older generations. Now, in case I didn't mention before, my study is a descriptive case study, which means I analyzed data from one specific interview in order to construct a detailed description of, her, of one person's experiences with stigma. The interview who participated in my study was a 40-year-old Filipino mother of an eight-year-old boy with ASD. She is of mixed descent, identifying as both white and Filipino. Additionally, her husband is of white ethnicity. The interview immigrated to the US from the Philippines after college, and both she and her husband work full time. The interviewee engaged in a semi-structured interview that lasted approximately 70 minutes. This, video, this interview was video recorded and was then transcribed by two researchers. From there, it was thematically analyzed using an inductive approach. An inductive approach means that we derived the codes to analyze the data directly from the data itself, which limited the possibility of any intermediaries that may have resulted in misinterpretations of the data. From the data, we had 19 codes, of which eight applied to my study. These eight codes were then further organized into themes of stigma, cultural differences, and generational differences. Stigma, in particular, was both a code, a theme, as well as a central topic of my study. Following our thematic analysis process, we also took measures to ensure credibility. Firstly, the interview was coded twice by three researchers in order to ensure innovative reliability. We also performed a member check in which we returned the interpretations of the results back to the participant to check for accuracy and resonance. From there, our results indicated that all three themes showed relations to each other. However, stigma showed a stronger relation to themes of cultural differences and generational differences separately than these two themes showed to each other. My results can be further explained by, an, by utilizing the analogy of a building in which all three themes built on top of each other in order to construct the central topic of stigma. On the first floor, we found that stigma is related to ASD awareness, specifically the lack of. In order to explain this clearly, I would like to use the interviewee's experiences, which was our data itself. The interviewee first recalled that her experience with stigma was first in an elevator in the Philippine consulate, in which an elderly Philippine woman consistently questioned her as to why her son, who was nonverbal at the time, would not respond and communicate with the woman. This demonstrates a lack of knowledge regarding ASD symptomatology on the elderly woman's part. However, it is not so clear cut. The interviewee, who is normally very open about her son's ASD diagnosis, cited feeling uncomfortable of, with the notion of correcting and educating this older woman. She attributed this to the woman's characteristics, specifically in the fact that she was an older Filipino. This demonstrates our second finding, that stigma is a generational phenomenon. Earlier in the interview, the interviewee cited living next door to two Filipino nurses. 
However, they treated her son with kindness and compassion, which was a stark contrast to the treatment of this elderly woman. This, the interview attributed this to the nurses being younger, which caused the difference in their behavior. However, the interview also attributed both the behavior of the herself and the woman in this scenario to having a cultural thing. This demonstrates our third finding, that stigma is a cultural phenomenon, and that, culturally, and that the cultural norm of respecting your elders both prevented the interviewee from correcting this woman, as well as enabling this elderly woman to be so consistent with her questions. Again, I would like to further explain my results by revisiting the themes of public and perceived stigma. Again, I would also like to use the interview's experiences, but I would first like to focus on public stigma. The interviewee recalled that whenever she spoke to people from the Philippines about her son's ASD diagnosis, they often expressed public stigma in the form of shame and pity. They often told her, oh, you have a special child, God bless you, and they compared her child to a burden or a cross that she had to bear. This demonstrates how a lack of base knowledge about ASD, as well as its causes, led to misperceptions about it, which then led to the manifestation of stigma. The interview, however, was consistent in her deflection of the stigma, by, in this case, by saying, no, he's my kid, and yes, he has autism, but he's my kid. Other members of the interview's family did not show the same consistency, particularly the interviewer's mother tended to internalize the stigma. As a result, she developed desires to conceal her grandson's ASD diagnosis. She, she expressed the desire to the interviewee by saying, oh, don't tell other people. Why are you posting about him having autism? Despite the interviewee explaining her reasoning as to why she posted about him on online communication forums, such as Facebook, the interviewee's mother remained persistent in saying, yeah, but you shouldn't tell other people. This demonstrates how the interviewee's mother tended to internalize the stigma. As a result, she associated an ASD diagnosis with shame and concealment. All in all, my study included four things. Firstly, that stigma is related to a lack of ASD awareness. Secondly, stigma is a generational phenomenon. The interviewee's experiences reaffirm the notion that stigma is more prevalent in the older generations and that the interviewee experienced more stigma from the older communities as, than the younger ones. Thirdly, Stigma is a cultural phenomenon in that culturally specific beliefs influence how stigma is manifested and maintained within a community. And fourth, both public and perceived stigma were prevalent within the interviewer's experiences. It is important to note that within my results, however, that the interviewer's experiences cannot be generalized to the entirety of the Filipino community. This is because one person's results and experiences cannot be accountable for the entire communities. Additionally, the interviewee has experienced cultural blending, which is something that is common within many people who, who have intersecting identities. Firstly, the, interview, the interviewee is of mixed descent, identifying as both white and Filipino. Additionally, the interviewee has lived half of her life in the Philippines, as well as half of her life in America. She, she specifically said within the interview that she has both a Filipino self, as well as American self. This was both a strength and a limitation within my study, in that while she, was a, she wasn't able to account for either culture, she was able to provide insight and comparisons between the two cultures. Future works of this study may include the expansion of the study by including multiple participants in order to increase the generalizability as well as the representation of both the sample and the, and the study itself. Other works may also consider this data to further develop an understanding of stigma and as well as to potentially design a methodology to combat this stigma so that someday in the future, autism won't be just used as a slang word that's still casually thrown around. With that, I would like to thank my, ment my mentor, Anthony Asuna, as well as the interview for participating in the study. Sorry, this is a really long list. I would also like to thank my unofficial mentor, Dana, as well as the Kegel Autism Center and all my partners who worked with me there. I extend my gratitude to Dr. Lena Kim, as well as my ETA, Michael Hughes, and my RC, Dory, as well as my friends and family who I both met here and back at home. I, now, most importantly, I would like to thank my mentor's Instagram famous dog, Pavlov the Corgi, for providing motivation and support during those particularly rough days. Thank you.